everybody, welcome back. Miss Lakin here at the Putnam. We are so excited that you're joining us for this Immerse video all about eras. Today, Chris Chandler, our curator of natural science, is gonna talk about the geological eras and the history of our world. And then we'll have a really fun activity in our fab lab with Matt and Cindy. With that being said, let's hit it off. And Chris, take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Chris Chandler. I'm the Curator of, of Natural Science here at the Putnam Museum and today I'm going to talk about the geological time scale as it applies to the term eras. Um, when you're a paleontologist or a geologist, when you hear era, you don't think of things like hours and days or, or months or years. Um, what you're usually thinking about is the geologic time scale and that's a huge time scale set up for geologists to understand the history of the planet Earth, which means it ranges to something like 4.6 billion years of time. So you can imagine when we talk about eras, we're talking about pretty big units of time. So if you're wondering what the geological time scale is based on, it originally started being arranged by correlating rocks, um, different types of rocks and fossils. So if you were in one place and you saw a, a section of rocks that has certain types of fossils and then 20 miles away you saw another section of rocks that had the same sort of thing, you would correlate them and think that they belong to the same unit. Um, as time goes by, we also found out there's some basic ideas that you follow when you're using um, geology to figure out uh, the different types of where these units go. Um, one of them was very simple. If uh, you have basically uh, rocks that are undisturbed, one of the simple things is a layer of rocks that's undisturbed. Uh, if it's lower, the lower rock is the older rock and the upper rock is the uh, younger rock. So it's an easy way to start correlating your rocks. Um, there's also some other principles. One of them that we always use in geology is uh, basically that the processes that are occurring today, like erosion from wind and water, they're the same processes that formed the earth, uh, formed basically the things in previous times. So, you know, you still have lots of rivers running, you've always had rivers running and things like that, so you, you look for the same processes, you understand them the same way. That being said, you know, there's things that we didn't know at the time 200 years ago or more, that things like asteroids would hit the earth and, and scatter things forever. Um, people didn't understand the idea of giant volcanic eruptions or giant plates of earth moving across the, the globe, that sort of thing. But the basic idea of what's called uniformitarianism, that's that, that rule about what's happening today happened before, um, is usually followed pretty closely. Um, when we're looking at uh, eras, what we're looking at is major events in the history of time. So you're talking about um, extinctions and arrivals of large groups of animals and plants. You're also talking about major geological um, events like huge eruptions, uh, plate tectonics happening where you have the continents ripping apart and going back together. And you include things, a lot of times you'll find that you include things like asteroids impacts. Um, when we look at these, the eras that we usually refer to, uh, there's one called, there's a sort of a catch-all group called the Precambrian, but then you have the eras are the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, or Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. So, like I said, the Precambrian is like this catch-all that basically is everything from the time we first get crust on the Earth to where you first start getting um, multicellular animals, uh, things like, uh, you'll get things like uh, soft-bodied creatures arriving, um, and basically you're talking about billions of years. The Precambrian is huge. Most of the eras themselves, the official eras, are like hundreds of millions of years, but the Precambrian is this huge monster thing that um, it's, like I said, a catch-all. So when we're talking about these eras, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic, um, we'll start with the Paleozoic, because that's the earliest one. Uh, Paleozoic means ancient life, and so we're talking about, about around 500 million years ago. Uh, suddenly there was a, a big bang, if you will, um, an explosion of animals that were um, had, hard, had hard body parts that actually could be preserved. So what that meant was that uh, basically you had uh, plants and animals and things that actually suddenly were able to take calcium out of the environment and create hard shells. And that's a bonus for paleontologists, of course, because that means they'll much more easily be preserved and we actually have a record of them. But you have this huge explosion of these animals everywhere. And we have things that occur like corals, a couple different types of corals. We have uh, the um, colonial corals. They're a different type of coral than what uh, we have today. Uh, we also had things like uh, interesting solitary corals, uh, which do no longer exist. There were shelled animals. 
like brachiopods. They look a lot like clams, but they're not. Um, and things like trilobites, which no longer exist, which are really kind of cool looking things. Um, during the Paleozoic, you also get the first uh, fish that occur. First fish had no jaws, and a lot of them were actually armored. So I have a, an example of a armored fish, part of an armored fish here. You get the first um, animals and plants going on land. First, the plants arrived on land, and then you get animals uh, conquering land like uh, amphibians and reptiles. And uh, the interesting thing is that the end of the Paleozoic came with another big bang. And what it was was uh, probably the largest mass extinction on the planet. Hard to believe, but something like 95% of all the marine life died. And you can imagine what happens when you kill off all your marine life, you end up with pretty much everything else dying. Something like 70% of the vertebrate life died at the same time. Now, I, people talk about what possibly caused this. It looks, so far what they're coming up, what we're coming up with with research is that it looks like it was like gigantic volcanic eruptions. Huge eruptions spewing tons and tons and tons of carbon dioxide into the air, basically causing a greenhouse effect that raised the planet temperature by something like 14 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which also then spewed all sorts of carbon dioxide into the oceans and made this toxic soup that killed everything off. Pretty scary, I know. <laughs> so from the Paleozoic, we get to the Mesozoic. And the Mesozoic means middle life, but everybody knows it as the age of dinosaurs. I happen to be paleontologist who studied dinosaurs, so yes, that's my favorite place to be. Um, it's also, though, it's interesting because the Mesozoic is also the time when you first find mammals evolving. So our group of mammals started to evolve, the group we belong to are mammals. Um, you get flowering plants that evolve, which is very cool because once you get flowering plants, then you also get pollinators, the insects that actually pollinate the flowering plants. So things like beetles and flies were around to pollinate plants originally. The thing about the Mesozoic, I think everybody knows, is that it also ended with a big bang. <laughs> In this case, it was an asteroid that struck the Earth and created basically a global winter, if you will, for many years probably. Uh, took out the dinosaurs and took out all these other things like flying reptiles, the pterosaurs, uh, lots of marine reptiles. We had the big mosasaurs, that sort of thing we lost. It also lost things like uh, the ammonites, which is a group of shelled cephalopods. Uh, if you ever, today we have a shelled cephalopod called a nautilus. But in the Mesozoic, there were huge groups of shelled cephalopods that were ammonites. And so they're sort of vaguely related, but they're not closely related. Um, I've got examples of those. We also have a big chunk of dinosaur bone to represent our dinosaurs because yes, we lost all the dinosaurs except for birds. So just remember, birds are not uh, dinosaurs are not extinct. We still have them; they're birds. If you will, a good thing about such a big extinction is it left a lot of open space for things to evolve, and actually mammals uh, were benefited from this because that left the the niches in in the environment open for mammals and birds. And so the Cenozoic, the next era is actually often called the age of mammals. There's another thing that actually started, if you will, spread very much in the Cenozoic, and that was uh, grasses. Cool thing about grasses, you know, if you start having grasses, you start having animals that eat grasses. So you think of those large herds, when you think of bison and stuff, that all occurred because the grasses evolved. You had these animals that could eat the grasses. Uh, there's other things that happened uh, during the Cenozoic. We had the giant ice ages, you know, those big cyclic ice sheets that came down in North America. Um, by the end of the Ice Ages, we lost a huge number of animals. Uh, in North America, we had what was called the megafauna, and that consisted of really great big animals like mammoths and mastodons. You had uh, horses. There were horses in North America. Uh, they became extinct, and then the Spanish brought them over later again. Um, we had camels and giant beavers and things like giant ground sloths, and we lost all of those at the end of the Ice Ages. Um, and of course, if you lose all those animals that are things like herbivores, plant eaters, then you probably are going to lose a bunch of large carnivores, and we did. So we lost things like our, um, we had lions, the type of lion, um, dire wolves, which are great big, huge wolves, and things like the saber-toothed cats, like our Smilodon here. Our own ancestors arrived in the Cenozoic, and that was about seven million years ago. That's just amazing. If you want to really blow your mind, all you have to do is think about how long humans, especially Homo sapiens, our species, has actually been on the planet. And it's just like this little speck.
compared to that 4.6 billion years. Hey everybody, I'm Matt and this is Cindy. And as we continue on with our immersion into the subject of eras, uh, we're going to be doing a fun activity with you today. So for those of you who are part of the Immerse program, uh, you probably already have your kits. It's got this handy little worksheet in it. Um, if you're not, don't sweat it. We have that information on our website and it's located in our virtual learning section. Uh, you can find the activity booklet, the actual content book, and some other fun stuff in, in that section of the website. This activity is called My Era. And I'm just going to read it to everybody here. The music you listen to, the food you eat, and the shows you watch will likely change through time. Think about things that make your life era memorable, not just a one-year thing or the weather this week, and use this space below to list things happening in your city, state, country, and even around the world. Then use your words, graphics, and photos to create a poster about your era. Sounds fun. So what materials do we have here? There's a little materials list. We've got sheet. some markers. We've got pencils. Scissors, Scissors, glue, glue sticks, stick. poster board, and I think we've got some pictures that we've pre-cut out. That yeah, we'll they can go on online and kind of download some photos that might illustrate any of these. Or from your phone, yep. print the photos off, magazines. Magazines, yep. Those are all good. Okay. But we're going to take a slightly different tack on this because Matt and I, we didn't grow up in the current era. We're a little bit older than that. So we're going to take a right on the way back machine to the 1980s and Matt, <laughs> what do you remember from the 80s? Let's go through the list here. You want to start with entertainment? I think what I remember is they're always kind of like video game arcades and pinball arcades but they, this is the time when all that stuff came into your own home and you could get an Atari or a Nintendo. So I remember personally growing up with when I first got a Nintendo I was like oh this is great. But yeah, I'm going to say, you know, Nintendo Entertainment System. Very what did good. You, what did you write down? Well, well for entertainment, um, I was an outdoor kid, so mm -hmm. my entertainment was outside. But when you were walking around outside, what you saw was people playing their music on boom boxes yep. through these shoulder stereos. And then we had the really dynamic shift for, away from the big music, and then all of a sudden, there's headphones. There's yeah. a Walkman. There's a Walkman, yeah. That was a big invention in that time, yep. And when it comes to music, there were definitely, like, there was an era of, like, hair rock. Like, big, oh, big like, yeah. hair! Everybody had Everybody this had, huge hair. Uh, yeah. And makeup. Yep. The band's heavily made up. Yep. High heel shoes, leather <laughs> pants, the yep. whole bit. It was, it was quite the scene. But what's interesting about that is, yeah, they had the big hair, but then there was, wait a minute. They're using hairspray. I remember being a kid and the subject of hairspray, anything aerosol related in these cans that you have to shake and spray, um, it was really bad for the ozone layer. And I remember being in school and talking about, it was an environmental aspect of just the earth, you know, atmosphere, the protective ozone layer, and how it was eating a hole in the ozone layer, right? right? There really was a lot of environmental awareness. I mean, we grew up with Smokey Bear mm -hmm. and Woodsy Owl on TV and all of that. Yep. And Earth Day became really big. Yep. And the rivers that caught fire. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. Ah, the water's ah. on fire. Yeah. yeah. And it's one of those where that really became, I think, when thing, I think Earth Day started in the 70s, but in the 80s, it really blossomed. Mm -hmm. So, how about we'll steer, well, let's end on something not so doom and gloom oh, planned. Okay, let's. <laughs> Fashion. I added something in my uh, do your own category. I wrote down fashion because 80s and fashion was pretty comical and fun. Um, Day glow. I wrote out day glow. Bright colors. Um, shoelaces were big. Yep. Like literally big. And, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's right. <laughs> you know. It's all coming back. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is one of those. Like I said, way back machine. Yeah. We are time traveling. Um, I think most of our audience is going to be in that kind of you know grade level of maybe fifth, sixth, seventh grade. You can do really the era of your lifetime. Um, everything that you know, all these categories, and add in your own, and uh, start kind of working through your worksheet. Then when you're at the point where we're at right now, we're going to transfer that onto uh, a poster board. We're going to make a poster of our era, the 80s poster. I think it's going to be really fun. Oh, I, 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 colors. I was going to say, let me get out the fluorescence. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to start working, and when we get done, we'll show you what we come up with. Okay. Let's do ozone layer paired up with the hairspray. Oh, yeah. You've got to <laughs> put those two together for sure. Because we have the space shuttle, I want that above the Earth because it shows that we can actually, okay. how we were getting some of these, I mean, 
They could see. I know this is satellite, but still, we were in space. So, Cindy, do you remember the shoes that you could pump up the little basketball and then go shh, shh, shh? Yes. Yeah. Community action. I mean, with Live Aid and Hands Across America. Yep. They didn't make it all the way across, but I remember people lining up down the highway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the old BMX that had all the pads everywhere, all color-coordinated. I think we've got a good start. But we left room where we can add. Well, feel free to, to do really whatever you want. This is there's no parameters on this assignment. We're not going to constrain you to any anything that you know you can't do. Just just make your own poster of your era and um, share it with everything everybody yeah. else and compare. What do you think is important right now? The '80s, so funny. All right, thanks for doing this with me. Oh, it brings back memories. Very good. Have fun, everybody. Take care. Bye.